Hey, this is John Carlos, and I'm here with a look at the Marvel Legends Infinite series of the Star Lord action figure from the Guardians of the Galaxy line. The sculpting on this figure is really solid, from all the uh, details in his mask to all the textures in his coat. The uh, sculpting on this figure is just fantastic. You can just look at all the details going on in his coat right here. And not just like on the front, but like even just the way it is cut in the back. Now let's take a closer look at some stuff here. There's his mask, and I think the you know be on the lookout for a uh, red paint. If you're shopping for this in person, the uh, the eyes I saw a lot where the eyes were not center, so be on the lookout for that. Um, but I think they did a great job with the, uh, the like the leathery paint, like all this sort of, you know, I consider it like a weathering paint that they use, like a second color tone. But the way that they applied it really does give like a faux leather appearance. I think they did a really good job. Considering this is like a little plastic action figure that's like six inches, the fact that they achieved like a faux leather effect with this, it's really impressive to me. Now one thing to be on the lookout for is uh, gloppy paint. Like this, there's a, so much silver paint here that it kind of overshadows the sculpting underneath. I saw some where you could see the uh, the sculpted lines underneath that more. Um, in fact, I'll show you what to be on the lookout for in general. I saw a lot of weird ones that had bad silver paint here, too much gloppy paint there, uh, the eyeballs here, the eyes on the mask, and also this brown shoulder piece. Some of the brown hangs down way past the shoulder or didn't come up. But other than those few issues, Paint on this is pretty good. I mean, his belt buckle is nice and clean. Uh, there's some really good texturing here on the pants. And uh, I like that they even, you know, did a good job detailing his rocket boots. Here they are on both sides. And I think just that good little bit of sculpting there. Pretty decent silver paint on the sides. And even the back of his boots. There's a lot of good work done on this figure. I'm really, really impressed by this. Hasbro, I think, really knocked this one out of the park. You can see all the little buckles on the back of his boots. That's pretty rad to me. Now, this figure comes with some tiny accessories, including these itty-bitty headphones and this even itty-bittier little uh, cassette deck. Uh, you can see it's got little buttons on the, the top there and a little cassette section. It's a nice little sculpt. Too bad it's just painted in one paint color. Uh, he also comes with the orb. It's a solid little piece. I dig it. But what I really dig is his quad blasters. Now, yeah, there's some little gold smear right there, but for the most part, I like the use of the little gold inside the sculpt, and it's a good sculpt. I really dig the way these turned out. They're a good-looking little accessory. Now, what's not a good-looking little accessory is his alternate head. It's, uh, you know, kind of a disaster. Now, I do like the sculpting of the hair. The hair is well sculpted, but see this material that the uh, hair is? They had to paint his face on, and man, that face does not line up paint-wise to the edge of the hair. Um, be on the lookout if you're shopping for these in stores. Uh, some of the hair is covered in his skin paint. Others, the hairline is pretty bad. This is one of the better ones I saw, but even this on the side, that's really not good. Also, just, it's really simple looking. Like, compared to Gamora and Drax, which are at least, you know, more humanoid people, uh, this looks like a really simple, I mean, I don't see Chris Pratt in there, and the paint is so smooth, it almost looks like a bearded child. Uh, I'm not really impressed with the eyeball paint. It's all very simple. The, the, there's no uh, secondary paint used on his, his beard or mustache. It's all very one-note paint scheme. Very simple eye paint, one-note skin tone. It just looks weird and silly to me. I'm really not happy with this. But let's see if we can uh, try to switch out the, uh, the head on this figure now. See if it's easy or not. Yeah, so far so good. Articulation on this figure is pretty decent. It's got a hinged ball joint for a shoulder and the uh, the mid arm cut, double elbow joint, and the uh, swiveling hinged wrist. Um, one thing worth noting is that the uh, this little flat line here kind of hits his his jacket. So if you pull his jacket down a bit and then put the uh, the hinge all the way down, you have to kind of pull that piece down a little bit. Uh, moving on to his chest, he does have a mid chest cut, but you can only move it so far down. It doesn't really do that much. Um, good range of motion though in the legs. The legs swing out forward. You got the mid thigh cut. Double knee joint. I love double elbows and double knee joints. And what I really love with toys in, you know, in the last year or so is not only the hinged foot, but the swiveling, which allows you to stabilize the foot more. I think that's a great touch and works out really, really well. 
Also, what works out well with both heads is that they, they pop onto a ball joint on top, but they have a hinge at the bottom of the neck, so you do get a really good range of motion. Also, I forgot to mention that I really do like the way his satchel is sculpted. I think it's a nice piece that hangs really well on him. Sometimes the strap will tend to pop up a bit, but you just kind of have to force it down, but uh, looks pretty good. One thing that doesn't really work out so well is the orb. These hands are sculpted to hold the quad blasters, and uh, you can't really have them hold the orb, so that's kind of a disappointment. But I like that the uh, individual uh, fingers are, or at least his index finger is separate, so he can hold it, the quad blaster, properly. That's a nice little detail that I appreciate. See it on this one too. That works out really, really well. And now you can also put his uh, headphones over his head, but they do kind of, you know, they don't, they aren't fitted to his head. They do look a little goofy, but oh well. So I dig this action figure a lot. It's got some good paint details, and I really like the sculpting done on the coat. The only gripe that I have is that alternate head, but it doesn't look as bad when you look at it from further away. I also want to point out that he does come with one other accessory, and that's Groot's left arm. We'll take a closer look at that in my Groot action figure review. Thanks for watching.